Welcome to another episode of the Chill by Net podcast. This podcast is created for those who are passionate about their personal development, health, and well-being. This is a platform for you to come chill by my personal stories and weekly tips in becoming a better version of ourselves and to live a better present. But first, let's chill. My name is Jeanette. Welcome back. Today's episode is for those who are currently going through a hard time or even just a bad day. And as you are navigating through it, whatever it is, whatever challenges that you are facing, I just hope that this episode can provide you with some chill and comfort. So we all have our struggles, whether we choose to show it or not. And today, I will be encouraging you and telling you that it's okay to show your struggles and that is choose to be vulnerable because I just feel that this concept about being vulnerable needs to be more encouraged in today's world. So when we are faced with our challenges, we are often told one of these things. You know, we hear our friends or our family telling us things like, you have to be strong, you know, you have to get through this. Don't let this defeat you because you're stronger than you think and stay positive. So these statements are almost everywhere and we have heard it in one way or another. And as much as they are good motivators sometimes when we need them, the point is that, you know, sometime or at the same time, we also need to encourage vulnerability in the process. And that is allowing ourselves to see and review our struggles as it is and not necessarily rush into getting through our problems or trying to solve anything. And choosing to be vulnerable is about opening up ourselves and sometimes our deepest fears, knowing that we may face judgment and negative reactions from people around us. But we still choose to do it anyway because it helps us find that new source of strength and support that we need. And definitely, it isn't an easy thing to do because it does require a lot of courage because in the process, we fear people's reaction, we fear their judgment because they're just part of human nature, right? And it's also hard because it sometimes requires a lot of patience as well. Patience to be able to communicate our struggles in a way that people can understand our struggles, especially if we are someone who is not very used to opening up ourselves to other people. Or sometimes, you know, we can just not know how exactly we are feeling to put them into words. So it can be a challenge and, you know, even though we might want to embrace vulnerabilities, but we might not know how to. So the past year has been a very challenging one for me. In fact, I think it's a very challenging one for the most of us, I guess due to the COVID pandemic situation and all that. But it was challenging for me because I've developed and suffered from a skin condition which I do not have a clear answer to, even up to now, yeah. And, you know, it may be genetics or it may have developed due to some allergic reactions to something which I have no clue at all. And it has just been bothering me for almost a year now. And I visited a few dermatologists and some told me that my condition was mild eczema. Some said that it was rosacea. But you know, one thing in common that I gathered from them was that the condition does not seem to be one that was going to be cured in a short period of time. And it may be something chronic that I have to manage for life. So it's a condition where my skin would get super itchy and inflamed and sometimes painful to the point where I just feel super uncomfortable when it flares up. And then, you know, it usually worsens when I'm outdoors and exposed to heated environments or even strong winds I realize can trigger that condition. Yeah, so literally almost anything can possibly cause a flare up. You know, sometimes even the food I eat or the workouts I do will trigger the condition. But anyways, you know, it wasn't an uncommon skin condition, at least from my perspective. You know, I've read online and there are people going through the same condition. But I guess it had affected me more than the usual levels, like more than the average person. Because I think that I see myself as someone who is quite a perfectionist, you know, when it comes to my skin. Well, not just my skin, but, you know, in other areas of my life as well, but especially when it comes to my skin. 
I've always been into maintaining a good skin health or good skin condition as part of my overall well-being. So when I suffered from this condition, I think it was my personal struggle because it felt so real. Like I think at some point, it just wasn't a skin issue anymore. It kind of developed more into a mental one, I would say. And I would have feelings of fear and low self-esteem every day. It affected my daily mood, my self-confidence. And, you know, I would wake up feeling like I didn't want to do anything. And I just felt like I wasn't myself at all. And just basically, as much as I want to feel positive about myself, I just couldn't. Yeah. So people would just tell me to get over it. Be strong. It's just a skin condition. You can do this. But I just can't help but to feel that you know, disappointment and the helplessness. So I was in a mental state which was not very healthy, but I couldn't pull myself out of it as much as I want to. So to put things into perspective, you know, like each time when I step out of my house, my skin condition will actually get worse and I would be feeling quite helpless, I would say, about it. And I think the part about helplessness comes from the fact that there's a lot of uncertainty And I just couldn't keep the condition under control because I just have no idea when it will flare up again. And I just want to avoid social interactions as much as possible. And yeah, I just really hated the fact that I was not in control of things. So the real struggle here was that my condition was affecting me so badly, physically and emotionally, to the point that I didn't want to meet anyone. But, you know, I just told myself that these fears were not valid enough and, you know, I just think people wouldn't understand and people wouldn't see it as something that, you know, is valid. And that's why I choose not to show my emotions and my fears and, you know, just downplay my struggles sometimes. And, you know, just I was just caught in that dilemma between my own well-being and fearing that I would disappoint others. It has come to a point where I'll accept a social gathering, you know, go for it, and then I'll get back home with an inflamed skin, and then I'll end up feeling super disappointed, and, you know, I will just resent myself for it, because even when I knew I wasn't in the right mental and physical state to put myself through those social gatherings, I ignored my feelings and condition and still went ahead with it. Because I wanted to be strong, and I wanted to overcome my feelings of anxiety, So the reason was also because I didn't want to disappoint my friends and I didn't want people to be worried about me. So this was just really me being afraid to be vulnerable and showing my situation to others as it is, you know, when I really needed to. So that was my story and my personal struggle. And I really wish that I could turn back time to tell myself that as long as something is affecting us emotionally, you know, it is valid and we really shouldn't downplay our struggles. You know, whatever the struggles that you're facing right now, they are real. You know, they affect our mental and our emotional well-being and we just shouldn't ignore it. So the only way we can overcome, you know, our challenges and our struggles is actually to accept and embrace it. Embrace it for what it is and not tell ourselves that everything will heal, everything will be okay because sometimes we just can't be strong when... We need that space and we need that time to just accept things for what it is. We just can't be strong. We have to go through that process of feeling defeated and that's okay. So we need to learn to tell ourselves that it's okay not to be okay. The second thing I've learned is that people really wouldn't understand if we don't practice to communicate to them, especially people whom we care about. We have to communicate it properly in a way that we try to seek understanding from others. So showing our vulnerabilities is really also about knowing how to communicate our fears and our emotions. And it is the first step for us to start understanding what are our needs. And it's also a way for us to, I would say, form better connection with people around us and form better relationships. So in my case, you know, after a while, I felt that, you know, this can't continue on because I was facing a lot of internal struggle. So when I didn't feel like meeting people for that week, you know, I would just tell my friends that I wasn't in the right mental state to meet them. And you will be surprised how much, you know, how much love and support you can get from people around you when you let your vulnerabilities out. People who care will try to hold back their judgment and they will give you the space and time you need. 
And I was just really fortunate to have people around me who are that way, who allow me the space which I need to focus on my recovery process. So they really may not understand how a skin condition can affect me so badly because they are not me and they have not been through it. But as long as we try our best to explain our feelings and communicate how it is making us feel, even if they can't empathize, they can understand things from our point of view. You know, especially if they are people who care about you. And I just can't emphasize this enough. They will respect that you will need to put your well-being first when you need to. And that's what we want to achieve at the end of the day. That support and that strength and understanding from our loved ones and people who matter so much to us. Because at the end of the day, we value different things. And hence, you know, different things affect us in different ways. When we manage to seek that support and that strength through our communications with them, I think that is where growth actually takes place as well. It's a wonderful thing. So I am recovering well mentally and physically, and I do still spend a lot of time to myself as I do need the personal space. And I'm also slowly introducing interactions back into my life at a pace which I'm comfortable with. This also means learning how to set the healthy boundaries and communicating it to people around me to let them know of my recovery process. And I really choose to believe that this journey of recovery will continue to lead me to become a stronger version of myself as I learn to be more open about my personal struggles to other people. And more recently, I also started seeking help from a therapist. And usually a therapist will give you that non-judgmental space you need because they are just trained in doing so and I think that's just one of the value of maybe seeking help from a therapist when you need it to find that safe space and that support. To be honest, it does scares me to talk about my vulnerabilities like that but I must say that I'm a little bit braver than before and there's just no shame in showing my own vulnerabilities as we are all imperfect in our own ways. And when we actually start doing it, we find that we get more comfortable and we get better at it. And it's funny how vulnerability is often the opposite word we use for strong. But I've came to learn that, you know, real strength and real growth comes from first accepting and embracing our challenges and vulnerabilities in life. So to me, showing vulnerability is an act of courage because it builds strength and it builds resilience. And I think it's important because... I realize that we can't always be strong and sometimes we just have to admit defeat in order to be strong again. So here's really a virtual hug for anyone out there living with their personal struggles, be it depression, anxiety, or whatever that you may be facing. You know, it may be a long-term problem or you just started developing certain challenges. I think it's okay to just ask for help around you and find your support and strength. So that support and strength, you know, is sometimes just about setting your boundaries right, saying no when you're not ready for something or when there's just too much on your plate. Or maybe sometimes support and strength can also come in a form of, you know, just taking a simple break as well and then showing up again when you are feeling ready. So just to wrap up the episode, you know, I just want to say that as we are facing the fears of revealing our struggles, just remember that we are putting in the work to build a stronger self and also a stronger relationship and connection with others. And learning how to be vulnerable and showing our struggles is a form of putting our well-being first. And that's why, you know, I dedicated an episode for it because I feel so much for it. It's so important to our well-being. Thanks for chilling in. If you enjoyed this podcast, don't forget to subscribe. You can also connect with me on Instagram at chillbynet or my website chillbynet.com to join the conversation and assess our show notes. Have a great day and we'll chill again.